everyone. My name is Allison Jennings Roche. I'm a reference instruction librarian at the University of Baltimore. I just started in January actually, but I am a UB alum. I have a master's degree in legal and ethical studies from UB. I have an undergrad degree in political science and English lit, and then I also have a master's degree in library and information science. Um, broadly, I know a little bit about a lot of things and it is my job to help people find the best sources for their research academically, personally, and just understanding what those sources mean and how to make choices um, when you're trying to understand information. In the modern age, you know, information is just coming at us like a fire hose and I just help narrow down um, the streams and figure out which is your best choice. Jeremy, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeremy Bottinger. I am the Learning and Mathematics Services Coordinator here at the RLB Library at UB. I have been working here for about three years. I also am a UB alum. I have uh, my MBA from UB. I have a post-grad certificate in instructional design, and my bachelor's is in math, specifically actuarial science. Um, so I'm a big math nerd, um, and I love explaining math to people, statistics. I've taught college math classes, and I've uh, been running math tutoring for a number of years now. So this is really one of the things I love to do. So Jeremy and I kind of were talking, and we discovered that, you know, with our uh, both of our expertise combined, we thought that we had something interesting to offer the UB community. We imagined with, you know, my information literacy experience and research skills, plus his math skills, we'd really be able to help break down some of these, um, some of the, you know, the vast amount of information coming at us based on the coronavirus. Um, one of the best sources that we actually have come across um, is the coronavirus website by the state of Maryland. Um, and there's quite a few charts and graphs and sets of numbers on that um, on that website and there's data and just talking about how to interpret that data and try to understand um, what those numbers mean. Um, I thought maybe Jeremy, could you take some time to explain um, what we're looking at when we look at websites like these? Sure, so this is, this is a very easy website to get to. It's coronavirus.maryland.gov. Um, it's provided by Maryland government. Um, but there's a lot of different graphics. So when you see it defaults to your total cases by day, graphic here on the left, that we also can see the map of Maryland, which pro what provides us with the number of cases by county uh, right here on the right. And then we have some other numbers down here at the bottom. So we can look at this first graph over here. It's the total cases over time um, by day. So if you hover over a date, it gives you the total cases by that date. But then if you look at the bottom, it gives you the 24 hour change. So these things provide us with different information. Like the number is gonna keep going up um, each day of the total number infected. But like we can look down here and it paints a different picture of the 24 hour change. Like is that can it gonna keep rising every day? Like the difference between on 4.2 was uh, 427 and then the most recent one was 326 or 367. So, um, it's too short term to tell like what that means, but you can monitor this and make some assumptions based off of that. They also have an age distribution. So it tells you um, the number of cases by age. Uh, so you can make sure that you're making informed decisions based off of that. And they even have it uh, broken down by gender distribution. It's, it's pretty even, but as, this, as we move forward during this pandemic, we can see some helpful information. They also have information about testing here. So the number of negative test results, um, which they update every day at 10 a.m. Um, this whole thing gets updated at 10 a.m. every day. And hospitalization, the return from isolation, there's just a ton of good information here um, that I, I personally look at on a daily basis. That's a great resource, Jeremy. Um, could you show us how that compares to something maybe a more national news website? Um, I know both of us like the New York Times, generally their information is well done and well vetted, but uh, as you showed me this morning, maybe their graphs aren't as up to date as even the state of Maryland. Sure, so I have the New York Times right here. And if we look, the total cases for this graph, and if you look right here, it says updated uh, April 4th, um, 2020, but it's, it's at 8.44 a.m. And if you remember, I said they update the Maryland information at 10 a.m. So if you looked at these numbers, you would see, oh, updated April 4th, which is today, it says uh, 2,758 cases. But if you go back to the Maryland website, it's actually been updated. So this graph 
is more current than this graph right here. So they provide like a similar picture, but the numbers are, are slightly different. Um, so it's just be mindful of uh, what information you're looking at and making sure you're getting the most up-to-date information. That's a really good point. I love how both of those websites have the timestamps. I think that's really helpful because often you see numbers um, and graphs kind of just floating around and you don't know from at what period in time that information has been selected. So it does actually make me trust both of those sources more in that they're being so transparent about when they're putting this information out and when they're collecting it. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, I was hoping that maybe we could turn this into a short series of information for the UB community. Um, uh, what do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. I think we have a lot of information to share um, between the two of us. We have a lot of great expertise. Um, so stay tuned to see what else we get into. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.